Yo, and welcome to the iSpooge Daily Channel. This is an experimental tech and media brand. Right now I'm homeless, I live in public, can't control the background noise. I thought it was really funny that the car alarm started honking the moment I was about to hit record. No such thing as gang stalking, absolutely not happening here, nothing to see here. I'm not saying it is happening on a spiritual level, who knows what's going down though. Demons jump bodies to any kind of weak vessel. That's why for so long as a homeless guy I refused to go live with my parents because they're drunks. And what does that mean? It means they're opening up tons of doors to demons all the time. And those demons will use their vessels to do bad things to me. I knew. I tried to set up a sanctuary to retreat to. But, you know, being that it's their property, I can't say, if I go to the garage, you can't follow me. Oh no, they'll follow. They're demons. It's their property. You know what I'm saying? It's not them. It's the demons jumping the bodies. So they like to play the game of, oh, you hate, you judge, you're hateful, yada, yada, yada. You're trying to control. You're, maybe you're the demon, yada, yada. No. People who drink are not demons. They are opening the door to demons. There's a very big difference in that little bit of teeny tiny bit of reading comprehension, listening comprehension. But when you got those demons controlling you, when you're on the demon time, you ain't hearing it. You're trying to create more chaos, destruction, theft everywhere you go. That rant was totally random, but true. The point today was going to be about... I've done a lot of talk on the Michael O. Church Three Ladder System of Social Class in the U.S. essay that I did a reading of about a month ago. There's another series of essays by someone a little bit more well-known as you know after the time he published the essays the ribbon farm you might know him better by the name ricky gervais he's had some pop culture this or that uh, i don't worry about the algorithm but hey who knows uh the, the system does tag nouns and things like that so just the fact of mentioning that name might do something the data is there right so that one like the three ladder system it talks about the life cycle of an organization and i might do a full reading of that series of essays on the channel too just unless someone else has already done it but it's a nice asset to do audio versions of essays that i refer to a lot uh, given the medium and i don't have the worst voice who knows i could probably still use some training but i certainly don't have the worst voice I can give myself that so the life cycle of the organization the main thing there is the three classes of people there's the clueless the psychopaths and the losers and brief breakdown would be so the losers aren't necessarily losers like like homeless people underclass type losers referring to the the church essay but they're economic losers but they can be content with that like me right now as a dishwasher being a trained computer scientist who's worked in computer science who's made 10 15 times my hourly rate why would i take a a 1000% pay cut well it's because i'm an economic loser right now now, I was put into this situation by psychopaths, so I'm not a loser by choice. <clears throat> I've been put into a losing position. Yeah, I can claw my way out of it. I've probably got to act a lot more psychopathic than the average loser. Because the thing is, losers... So psychopaths are the top of the organization, the eye of the pyramid. If you look at the logo for this channel, it's the eye of the pyramid, same thing. So, yes, I may be capable of being an organizational psychopath um i may have that dna inside myself but there's still the the polarity the positive negative polarity you can choose so the losers can quickly be moved out of the loser rank into the psychopath rank the clueless will never end up in the psychopath rank or probably the loser rank the clueless is very close to the midwit. So the clueless and gentry would have a lot in common. A lot of the gentry is going to be clueless. 
But some of the gentry can be psychopaths, some of the gentry can be losers, aware or unaware. I think there's aware and unaware losers. It has been a good number of years since I've read this essay last, although it's one of those ones that you revisit every few years. And it's been on my radar for 10, 15 years. So I'm a loser in my current environment. And a lot of times when I work in a new place, I get tapped for management very quickly, you know, because that psychopathy is latent in me. I do have it in me to be a manager, to be ruthless, et cetera, et cetera. But a lot of times what happens is the clueless who can also be psychopathic, they're just not the organizational psychopath leaders. They may want to get into the psychopathic leadership. Um, the thing is, so there's a difference between bosses, leaders, and managers. So a manager can also be a boss or a leader or neither. Um, if they're not managing any people, they're not a boss or a leader. So there's like people managers, non-people managers. I'm, I'm pulling this out of my own experience and just like getting a download right now. Like I said, I watch these talks myself a number of times as well and get stuff from it. So I'm just a clean vessel talking on certain topics. So the, on this one, I'm trying to focus on just summarizing the ribbon farm essays the life cycle of the organization and a little bit how it's bro broken down so the essay is in like five parts so the church essay was like a 50 minute reading this one's probably going to be five or six pieces of like 30 to 40 minutes if i had to guess so this might be a good few hour uh listen and who knows when i'm going to get it done but i love reading i want to read that essay and it's really just a matter of having the space here. So how do we start? We started off talking about public, whatever it was I talked about at the very beginning of this essay. See, I watch these things myself. Oh, is it because I have Alzheimer's? No, it's just because, you know, these are fire and forget. I just talk. I don't know what I'm gonna talk about. I don't even have bullet points. Maybe I could. In fact, I've got a surprise for you guys in a future talk. Uh, maybe we could use it for... No, I'll just do the audiobook as just a raw, unabridged one. And then maybe I can do some abridged versions, edit it, whatever. But yeah, I've got an exciting tool that I've used before a lot on this channel. But, you know, when you flee, you kind of leave a bunch of stuff behind. And actually I did bring this of all things, the big clunky tool of all things I brought. But I had to get some uh, consumables so that I can actually use the tool. Because sometimes tools need consumables like uh, wipes or blades or just being, being vague. But um talked about something outside something with my parents maybe being degenerates maybe I mentioned that my parents were kind of the economic losers um, uh, yeah anyway pardon that uh, maybe someday I'll hire an editor too for these videos and do some thematic this and that I've talked about the direction I want to take the channel here and there in the past so yeah right now so I, I actually it's kind of interesting i focused focused more on the social class aspect of the life cycle of the organization than i did on the actual life cycle of the organization so i spooge daily as an organization and at some point if it becomes valuable it's possible it could be recycled and scrapped and absorbed into other organizations it's not what i want but that's the life cycle of organizations so so psychopaths rule the organization losers come in they can be aware or unaware of their loserhood the aware losers often get tapped into psychopathy the 
clueless are there, you know the management layers the middle management they're they're company men that's the way the essay describes them so they're fully invested in the mission of the company they're not smart enough to they're not smart enough to grasp maybe the bigger patterns the life cycle the classes of people but they're not they're not dumb enough to go through with a low you know the the low IQ the high IQ and the midwit and the low IQ and the high IQ often match up almost like the elite and the labor almost match up so the midwits the clueless the company men they're like they're too smart to like they care a lot they're smart they look at the future but they're not so dumb that they can just like check in and just be aware that they're a loser content that they're a loser not like socially they might have a ton of friends a set loser has nothing to do with like friend groups or anything like that it's just the economic side like you could be getting a better economic deal so they're like risk averse if you've seen the movie idiocracy you might think about like the couple who doesn't have any kids because oh have kids in this market no way oh you know what i mean versus like the the redneck guys like smashing all over the place getting tons of kids from tons of baby mamas etc so in the end evolutionarily the trailer trash ends up surviving while the midwits end up dying out. So it's like they're smarter than dumb people, so why don't they breed? They're almost too smart to breed. So it's like the clueless, the middle management, the company men are like, they're too smart to make short-term decisions for better or worse in some ways. And so they're perfect middle management layer for the company. They shield the psychopaths at the top from the losers at the bottom who don't get quickly elevated into the psychopaths at the top. There's so much possible overlap with the gentry and the, the middle management layer and like Yeah, I, I obviously have been thinking about this today. Like, you know, what is it about this or that that's um, allowing me to be incorporated into the organization or not? Like, so I have to adopt the mindset of unaware loser. Like, I'm aware that I could be getting a better deal. I'm not really shooting for more. I'm not acting like a psychopath. I'm not, like, drinking all the company Kool-Aid. Now... In corporate companies where I've worked in the past, I probably have sort of been a midwit, but I've never quite had that aptitude. So it's like I can drink the Kool-Aid. I'm, I'm smart. I think long term. I like to learn new systems. And so I can drink the Kool-Aid of a company's onboarding process. You know what I'm saying? But at a smaller company, you don't really have an onboarding process. You got just like a, when can you start? Okay, let's go. Everything is just like scrappily done. The, there might be like some HR system that they use or something. But so like where do I fit in with my new job? So I've thought about all these aspects of the, the gentry, the labor, the elite. And so now we can explore, you know, aspects of the loser, the midwit, the psychopath. And talk about all kinds of experiences I've had in the past up until now through that slightly different lens. And we should have one where we almost map the two together. Like make some Venn diagrams of like overlaps about like social wealth, overall capacity within the company, etc. So at my current company in, in these terms, I'm you know, probably an aware loser. I think, well, I actually heard somebody say we could promote Harlan and I'm like, oh no, I don't want to be promoted. I just want to own the dish pit. And so that's what kind of made me think and break down the dishwasher into kind of two tracks, the, the chef track and the janitor track. And there might, another one, third one I thought of might be the maintenance track. Like the guy who comes through and maintains the dishwasher every week or 
whatever the schedule is. So, you know, they could have started off as a dishwasher and then, you know, been like, huh, let me check out the manufacturer of this dishwasher, see if they got any openings. Oh, indeed they do. And, you know, applied to be a maintenance tech. They were a dishwasher for a long time. They probably did some magic on some dishwashers in their time, you know, little fixes. And so they're like, yeah, I've got the aptitude to work on dishwashers. And then like, boom, 25% raise, bam. You know, heck yeah, I'm gonna do that instead of just be a dishwasher. So that's a track I could take too. I might, I would have way more aptitude for the maintenance track than the janitorial track, but I didn't think about the maintenance track right away. So, I mean, that could be a next step. I've been working dish pits for a while. I could apply to, you know, some, something like that where I go around and maintain dishwashers. So, I was gonna try to like pull out something to do with the vegetarian thing that happened at the very beginning, but I think that's actually more, let's see if we can relate it. We got four minutes left. So in terms of gentry labor elite, you know, I came in and I knew, like, I don't want to say that I'm a vegetarian to anybody, anything like that. When someone was introducing me as a vegetarian, why would they do that? Like of all things, it's because everybody knows in labor, nobody's vegetarian. Being vegetarian is a hella gentry thing. And so if the elite are programming the labor and gentry to hate each other, you know, like college kids or whatever from a plumber, except for their own kids, of course, who they want to send to college because they're going to be different, yada, yada. So if I go in, so then there's another one that I should do a talk on, which I've mentioned in some titles in the past too, uh, status illegibility. If you search my channel for status illegibility, legibility is reading, illegibility is not being able to read, social status. So you come in, First question, are you a vegetarian? S that squarely makes my status legible as gentry or wannabe gentry. Too good for labor, probably doesn't want to work. Like all these stereotypes about <clears throat> gentry from labor. Oh, they sit on a computer. Oh, they work from home. They're not actually working sort of thing. Like the labor really think low of gentry. And, you know, I mentioned I kind of have to pick one to be marketable to anything like I am not marketable at all to gentry right so being identified as a vegetarian is not beneficial at all and all it does is give gentry more ammunition to use against me to say that I don't have the ideological purity of a vegan so like why am I going around misrepresenting myself as a vegan when I I only am vegan at home when I cook for myself but if I work in a kitchen that has meat I'll eat meat right well, so I've, I've lost all credibility with the gentry as a vegan who's practical and sort of needs to eat meat when I'm at work. Well, you come into a labor workplace and you introduce me as the vegetarian. Here's the gentry guy. And we hate the gentry, right? So dead in the water. I knew right away instinctively I didn't have that lot, that rational view of it that you know can come to me when I sit down and think about it and ask for a rational view but immediately it was just sandpaper like I pardon the bump there I know I don't want to be outed as a vegetarian in this setting so that's not all there is to it but that's that's the you know keep it secret portion of it whether people knew it or not, I would have chosen my course of action of just blend it and eat, what, eat what's in the kitchen. The Thai forest monks were the first group of people who I knew did that. If they're vegetarian, but if someone gives them hospitality with meat, they're not going to refuse that hospitality, right? So it's the same kind of thing in a kitchen. Um, more so as a temp, after a while, sure, people will learn. Within a family, definitely, they should accommodate you. But, you know, in... You know, a new kitchen, learning the menu, getting a taste for things, the vibes, everything. It's absolutely within grace to say, I work in this kitchen. I'm going to sample everything as a normal employee, et cetera, et cetera. So maybe after time when they become more family-like, you can turn it off. 
But yeah, here we are coming up on the 20 minute mark. So once again, thanks for joining and looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye.